One of the most common questions I get asked is when should I start braking? And this question and this problem is not to be underestimated. It causes a multitude of problems. Quite often, if I have a pupil who is struggling with something, braking is quite often the culprit. For example, let's say somebody brakes too late at a junction and too sharply. That means they don't have time to change gear. They don't have time to position themselves. They don't have time to make a good decision. Or they may brake too much too early leading them to trying to accelerate again and then in the end they end up braking too late too sharp again giving them all those same problems i just mentioned so what's the solution to this problem then well i can tell you one thing with absolute certainty you absolutely should not think about when you should start braking because it's in doing that that causes you that problem when you should start braking is completely variable how hard are you going to brake? Is it uphill? Is it downhill? How fast are you going? When you should start braking is impossible to predict because what matters really is how hard you're going to brake. That will determine when you should start braking. So thinking about when you should start braking is, is impossible. You should think about where you need to finish braking by that's where you need to put your focus. If you focus on where you need to stop by and start braking early, that's when you should start braking really early, making sure you have ample time to stop by your target. Then you focus on your target and you focus on your brake and you focus on how much you're slowing down and you look at your target, where you wanna stop by, that's your target, and you feel, does it feel like I'm gonna stop in time? If it feels like you're gonna stop in time, great. Does it feel like I'm gonna stop really early? If it feels like you're gonna stop really early, maybe less brake. Does it feel like I'm not gonna stop in time? Then add more brake and you have to put a lot of concentration to this and you need to focus on that target and not be distracted by other things such as gear changes and checking your mirrors too much. You check your mirrors before you brake. Just focus on slowing down to a slow, slow speed first and then move on to gears steering and decision making which is why it's so important to stop a little bit early or not stop get to a very slow crawling speed a little bit early than where you actually need to stop by so time for a head cam demonstration this is how a learner normally breaks at the end of the road so they come in too fast and then they start braking too much, then off the brake too much, then off the brake, then too much, and off the brake, and then too much, with a nasty fud at the end. No time for gear changes, no time for checking, and no time for position. Looks like I can actually go here, so let's get going. So this is how I recommend you brake. Going left at the end of the road, it's a mirror signal, and I'm gonna start slowing down from here really early. As a new driver, do it really early. Focus on where you wanna be stopped by. By the, just before the end of the road, I brake more if I need to, and I brake a little bit less. I brake a little bit more, I brake a little bit less. A bit more until I'm crawling like this, and I can get first. Then I can steer around the bend and start to check to see if it's safe to go. And if it's clear, I can continue without needing to stop. It's super important to start braking really early because as a new driver, you won't know the sensitivity of a brake pedal. What you also have to understand as well is that brake pedals have slack. And what slack is, is the dead space that you can press the dead space. That's not a good way of saying it. The dead travel. So as you press the brake pedal, nothing happens to begin with. And then it bites. Like a biting point of the clutch, the brakes also have a biting point. And if you do it really early, you have time to gently find that biting point without going into it too harshly and braking too much and then suddenly coming off and not braking at all. If you're doing it super early, you can press that brake pedal really gently until you find the bite point of the brake and it starts slowing you down. And hopefully, even after you've done that, you still have plenty of time, plenty of distance left between you and where you need to stop to modulate the brake, to add more brake and to take brake off as you see fit to try and feel like you're gonna stop by your target. Focus on your target and feel. Does it feel like I'm gonna stop in time? Does it feel like I'm stopping too early or too late? Continually focus on that and continually adjust the brake until it feels right. 
So here is another example of how you should slow down as a beginner. Going left, focusing on the triangle just before the end of the road, starting to find the break. There it is, it's slowing me down now. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. First gear now, I'm really slow. Maybe a little bit more brake there, so I'm really slow. I can start steering and start checking. It's very close, this junction, so I really have to be slow and close to the end. And I just pull out slowly until I'm in the way. Once I'm in the way, then I must finish. Now that is a different video. That's for, that's a video that I need to make how to emerge from closed junctions, but focus on the braking part of that for this video. If you're trying to slow down for a second gear junction, I recommend trying to slow down to around about 10 miles an hour, at least five car lengths before where you want to turn, possibly more to give yourself time to change the second gear. As you get more skilled, you'll be slowing down and changing the second gear at the same time. But when you're just learning how to use the brakes, best focus on the brakes. Don't be distracted by your gear change because that will stop you from braking very well. Here's an example. So I'm going left in this junction. I'm focusing on it and finding the bite point of the brake. There it is. Clutch down so it doesn't stall. A little bit more brake, a little bit less, a little bit more. About this speed, around 10 miles an hour. You come off the brake, put it into second, clutch up, and then you're ready to turn in. You can get it ready even earlier than that if you want, to give yourself more rolling time. When you're starting out, it's important to be really early. Don't worry if the car rolls for a few seconds before you get to the junction. That's just gonna help you learn how to get good at the brakes even quicker. I've now put a camera on my feet and I'm gonna slow down towards a junction so you can see how much my brake pedal actually moves. It's very small, barely noticeable sometimes. And this is why most new drivers always over brake and under brake because they move their foot too much you really do have to move it a very small amount. And this is an average car. It's not like the brakes on this car are overly sensitive compared to most cars. It's pretty standard. So I'm gonna slow down for the end of the road, going left, starting to press the brake to find the bite of the brake. It's biting now. Clutch down so it doesn't stall. A Little bit more brake, a little bit less, a little bit more, a little bit less. Can you see the difference? A bit more now, a bit less now, a bit more. Completely off now. Could you see the pedal move up and down? It really is tiny. And that's why most people struggle using the brake when they start out, because how can you know how little you need to move that brake? Your instructor says brake more, you brake more. <laughs> yeah, you brake way too much, but it's not your fault. It's simply because you don't know how much more you need to brake. It really is a small amount. You do get the hang of it though, but I do have a very handy tip to help you get the hang of it. And I call this tip target practice. And what I tend to do with new customers, beginners, is I get them to start in the passenger seat. This is one of the best decisions I've ever made. I have dual controls. So they sit in the passenger seat and they operate the dual control brake whilst I do everything else. And what I do is I drive down a quiet road and I say, try and stop smoothly by that lamppost, by that bin, by some object at the side of the road, and they try to break in time for it. They start off horrifically at first, but because they can just focus on that brake pedal, they do get better quite quickly. Normally within 20 minutes, which is a very short time to get good at this, they're pretty decent at the brakes. So this is how it would work. We wouldn't be going very fast. I'd make sure it's safe first and I'll say stop by that post. And then they will start braking. I'll do signals and steering and anything else that's needed. I'll even push the clutch down and they will start trying to stop in time for the post. Get a little bit slow, a bit early, let it roll. And when the post gets outside their window, then they would stop. Now I say it's one of the best decisions I've ever made because it really is when it comes to teaching people to drive. That has helped me teach people a lot more quickly because bad braking holds them back in every other area of driving. So if I can help them get good at the brakes sooner, it means everything else they do gets a whole lot easier. Well, I sincerely hope this video helps you with your braking and in turn helps you with other aspects of your driving too. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and check out my sponsors, Conningwood and Confused.com. 
Collingwood are brilliant if you're learning to drive because you can insure yourself on a friend or family member's car without affecting their policy, which takes away a big stress when it comes to learning to drive. Using the link does support the channel, but at the moment there's also a £20 gift card, an Amazon gift card to you. The offer does vary and change from time to time, so if you're watching the video in a year's time, it may be a different offer, but there's normally an offer there. Recently, it was 20% off. If you're insuring your own car, check out confuse.com. I find them to be one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, comparison website out there for new drivers, inexperienced drivers, and experienced drivers. Again, using the link does support the channel. If you wanna get my future videos, please subscribe, and until the next one, cheerio.